All right, hello again. We're going to continue with our discussion of electrochemistry, and now we're going to look at how to take the cell potential that we talked about in the previous section, combine that with work and free energy from Chapter 16. Okay, so let's talk about work in a cell. So work is accomplished when electrons are transferred, but this depends on the push or the thermodynamic driving force between the electrons, and this is the EMF. So which way are, you know, are the electrons going to flow? That's what helps determine work. So we define work in terms of the potential difference, or sorry, we define EMF in terms of the potential difference, or, which is in terms of volts, between two points in the circuit. And so EMF is equal to potential difference in volts, which is equal to the work in joules divided by the charge in coulombs. So work is from the point of view of the system. So if it gains, so if the system has to do work, that's negative. And if it, like, work is done on it, that's positive. So when a cell produces a current, we know we want the cell potential to be positive. But that current can be used to do work, which means work is going to leave the cell, which makes it negative, which means that cell potential and the work are opposite in sign. And so in, another way to find cell potential is to take the negative work, because remember, we want cell potential to be positive, and work is negative, so we multiply it by a negative divided by Q, which represents the charge. And if we rearrange this, we get that uh, negative work is equal to charge times the uh, cell potential. So the maximum work that can be obtained from the maximum, uh, can be obtained from maximum potential, um, but some energy is always wasted through friction. And so this is why, one of the reasons why we use a potentiometer or a digital voltmeter, because it's going to reduce that. But again, we want entropy, which is disorder, and so we need to spread out the energy, and that, because entropy is favored and we're spreading out energy, some of it's going to be lost through friction. Okay, so let's talk about how to calculate work. So a Faraday, or capital F, is the charge on one mole of electrons. And this is a constant of 96,485 coulombs per mole of electrons. So we can use Q, which is our charge, and that is equal to the number of moles times Faraday's constant, so N representing the number of moles. Then we can use our work equation, so work is equal to the negative charge times the potential, and we can find use this to find work, either actual or maximum, depending on what cell potential we use. We can then find the efficiency of the cell by taking the actual work divided by the maximum work times 100. So we can take these equations and relate them to calculating free energy. So for a process carried out at constant temperature and pressure, the change in free energy is equal to the maximum useful work obtainable for that process. So the maximum work is equal to change in delta G. We can then substitute some of our equations for the galvanic cell. We know that the maximum work is equal to negative charge times the cell potential maximum. And so substituting that in for work, that quantity is equal to free energy. And then we also know that charge is equal to the number of moles times Faraday's constant. And so basically, if we combine these, we get that the change in free energy is equal to negative N, number of moles, times F, Faraday's constant, times uh, the cell potential. And if we're in standard conditions, that's basically what these little circles mean. Same idea, negative N, F, standard cell potential. Remember, we want a positive cell potential, and this corresponds to a negative delta G, which we also want. So this means if both of these things are true, that the galvanic cell is going to run in the direction that gives the positive value for the potential of the cell. So let's talk about how to calculate that. Okay, so we want to calculate delta G for this reaction, and we want to know is the reaction spontaneous. So if delta G is negative, then the answer to that question will be yes. So what first thing we need to do is find our half reactions. And these can be found in the appendix of almost any chemistry textbook. And so uh, I found the two half reactions. And remember, right now, these are both in terms of reduction. And so we have copper to plus, plus two electrons goes to just copper. And the potential for that reaction is equal to 0 0.34 volts. And then our other half reaction, also in terms of reduction currently, is iron 2 plus, plus 2 electrons. Convenient that they have the same electron transfer. That makes things a little easier. And that goes to solid iron. And the cell potential for that reaction is 
negative 0.44 volts. Okay, so we need to figure out which one we want to, instead of being reduced, to be oxidized. And we choose the smaller one because we want cell potential to be positive. And so iron is the one that we're going to switch. And so that becomes oxidized then. And so we have Fe solid goes to Fe2 plus, plus two electrons. And so now the cell potential is positive 0.44 volts. And because oxidation is recurring, occurring at this free half reaction, this is the cell potential for the anode compartment making copper because it's reduced the cathode. Okay. So now, let's find our overall cell potential. So remember, we're not using this one. Our electron transfer is equal, so we don't have to do any manipulation that way. So we have copper 2 plus plus iron, and that goes to copper plus iron 2 plus. And so our overall potential for the cell is 0.34 and 0.44, which gives us 0.38. 78 volts, so cell potential is positive. That's a good sign. Now let's calculate our delta G. And this is equal to negative NF standard potential for the cell. Well, we know that N is equal to 2 because that's the number of moles of electrons that were transferred between the two half reactions. F is Faraday's constant, which is 96,485 coulombs per mole of electrons, M-O-L. And we know that the standard reduction potential for the cell is our 0.78 volts. And so we can plug those in. So we have negative 2 moles of electrons times our 96,485 coulombs per mole times our cell potential, 0.78 volts. Uh, another unit for volts, because as you can see, our units aren't going to completely cancel yet. Another way to write volts is joules per coulomb. So we have our moles that cancel, our coulombs that cancel, we're left with joules. And so if we multiply that out, we end up with negative 1.5 times 10 to the fifth joules, which means that the process is spontaneous due to two factors, that the cell potential is positive and our change in free energy is negative. And those are the conditions that you want to have a spontaneous reaction. Okay, let's look at another one. So we want to predict whether one molar uh, nitric acid will dissolve gold metal to form one molar of gold ions. And so the first thing we need to do are find the two half reactions. So for the nitric acid, I found one involving, whoops, uh, the NO3 ion because that's what's going to happen with that acid. And so that one is NO3 minus four hydrogen ions, three electrons, going to nitrogen monoxide and, oops, two water molecules. And so the potential for that cell is 0 0.96, sorry, not that cell, that half reaction. For the gold, I also found a half reaction for it. And remember, these are both in terms of reduction currently. And that goes to solid gold. And the potential for that half reaction is negative 1.5, no, positive 1.5, sorry, volts. Okay, well we know we want to form gold ions, which means that this is our reaction that we need to switch, and so this really becomes gold, and so this is the one that's going to be oxidized, which means this is our anode making this one our cathode. Gold, three plus ions, plus three electrons. That makes this the anode, and that makes that negative 1.5 volts. And so if we put these together, our electrons transfer. That's really nice. So we have NO3 plus four hydrogen ions plus our solid gold. Whoa, how did we get to silver all of a sudden? Whoops. There we go, gold. Uh, and that goes to nitrogen monoxide, water, and our gold ion. And the standard reduction for our cell is, we did not use this one, 0.96 minus 1.5, that gives us negative 0.54 volts. So it will not occur because the standard potential for our cell is negative, and we need it to be positive in order for a reaction to occur. Okay, so we've talked about um, how to incorporate the cell potential into work and free energy.
Uh, these are the, the problems that we're going to do in class, and we'll also go over some discussion questions. Have a good day.